Good morning. Good morning. Hey, if you do me a favor, look left and look right and tell that person next to you you love them and you're glad they're here.
going to enjoy them. They'll introduce themselves. I just call them the sword family because then I don't have to remember all the names. It helps me a lot. There's only four of them. You'd think by now I'd learn them. Them guys. You guys and that one gal. But it is the sword family and they're coming to sing for you right now. So would you make a walk for this Because if you smile at them, it's much easier for them to see because they think they're welcome. You can surprise them later by putting that frown that I see during the preaching of the message. But I'm just saying, for right now, I'll put a smile on your face. There you go. You're looking Come good. On. And this is the sword family.
room. <laughs> it doesn't take you halfway and leave you there. Amen? I'm going to say it one more time. He doesn't take you halfway through that battle and leave you in the middle of it. Amen? Amen. I'm getting some feedback over here. She wants me to introduce us. Just concentrate on the blessings that the Lord's given you. Worship with us, amen.
on whom I will show mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. In chapter 34, verse 6, the Bible said, Then the Lord came down. Would you go ahead and sit down? <laughs> the Bible says, And he came down in the cloud, and he proclaimed his name. He passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in good and truth, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin, yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. I'd like to say, first of all, today, we owe a great deal to those that over the years that have sought the Lord with pleading and imploring hearts. And abundant harvests have been reaped from a little seed of interceding grace. I, I, I do not know today where I would be had it not been for a loving prayer was offered in my benefit. Yeah. A fervent prayer was breathed out of a humble heart with my name attached to it. And then my life was changed. Listen to me this, this morning, because the thing is, if we would drop a few seeds of prayer in our lives, the crop may live when our short race <laughs> is ended. The person seeking God here is Moses, and he thirsts for a clearer knowledge of God. He had seen much. And therefore, he begins to burn because he wants more. Yeah. I have seen a great deal, but I want more. Yeah. And so he cries out, I beseech you, show me your glory. I want to see your glory. It's a very large desire, but gracious souls crave all that God can give. Amen? Amen. I mean, we've had a little bit, but don't you want a little more? Yes. Amen. Amen. Wouldn't you like to just walk in the Spirit? Yes. Wouldn't you like to get up in the morning and the first thing the devil does is say, I'm leaving this house. And it honors the giver, giver and is honored by him. And his response is, I will cause all my goodness yes. to pass in front of you. I'd like to point that out. He said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you. And I will proclaim my name, yes. the Lord, in your presence. Amen. God's glory is his goodness. And his goodness is is his glory. His name is the marquee in which these wonders shine. I wonder, are you like me? Do you have a holy wish this morning to get just a little bit closer than you've ever been before? Lord knows that in the age that we're living, we need a stronger walk with God. We need to walk in the Spirit in such a way that when the devil comes cascading our way, we can hold up our hand and say, the ground that I stand on is a holy ground. His glory, I do. Oh, yeah. Would you like to taste His goodness this morning? Yeah. Amen. To feast at the banquet of this experience. Come then, every single one of us. We have the right to come before the Lord in faith. Come and bow in humble awe, for the Lord is passing by and He speaks. He's proclaiming out of His voice, the Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God. I am slow to anger. I'm abounding in love and faithfulness. I'm maintaining love to thousands. I have forgiven wickedness and rebellion and sin, but I don't leave the guilty unpunished. In other words, I'll give you everything that you want, but understand that when I'm passing before you, don't bow your head and 
say, I don't want none of it. You ought to hold up your hands and say, God, give me of your grace. An entourage of glory issues out uh, from the courts of heaven. And every image shows some glimpse of him. I can just imagine. He said, all of my goodness will pass before you. In other words, it just keeps right on coming. I don't just run out. I don't just have a little bit. I have more. There is more to come. Maybe some of us have had a little bit. We say, well, that's all we deserve. Not me. I've had a little bit. I want more. And I don't care if I deserve it. I just know that my God is good and gracious. And if I can hold on to him, I can get more and more. And I need it today. I hunger for a closer walk with God. I thirst for a closer walk with God. The world is coming against us. Men and women, boys and girls, it's time for us to stand boldly and proclaim that we are children of the Most High. And we are not ashamed. And we stand against the evil world. And we do not bow to the gods of this world. very first glory that comes out is the Lord. He, he lets the, the name be known. The Lord Jehovah. Oh, wonder sound. The Lord Jehovah. Yes. It casts the mind back through an age of eternity gone by and it bears it forward through eternity to come and it lets us know that God, it loudly tells us uh, that through the past uh, and through the present uh, and into the future, He is everything we need. Everything. It pictures him as I am before time was, I am, and when time shall be no more. It robes him in all the majesty and dignity and grandeur and boundlessness of changeless unity. It exhibits him as the sole great fountain of every stream of life. Oh, my soul, such is the Lord. Amen. Great beyond fault. Vast beyond grasp. Immeasurable beyond the human line and untraceable by human search. Our God is above all of these. Yeah. How marvelous is this From this lofty throne, his eye, though, now I'm just describing him, but his eye is fixed <coughs> on you. Can you imagine? I'm trying to give you a description and I am inadequate. I don't know how to put all the adjectives together to begin to describe what his glory might be like. But in the midst of all of this, his eye is upon you. Yes. Who am I? That God would, who, that the old psalmist said, I am but a worm in his sight. But his everlasting, and he is all of those things. And through all creation, all infinities, your image fills his heart. Who are we that in our image should fill his heart? And, and, and that just blesses me. We do not adore him and, and, and reverence him and, and bless him this morning with me. And we will love and praise and serve him. I think that's a good thing, don't you? Before another sound in that scripture that we just read is heard. Jehovah's name is doubled. It says, the Lord, the Lord. In other words, the repetition tells us to look again. Look deeper this time. I want you to see our thoughts are not enough. Our searches are not enough. This is the great I am. It is the Lord. It is the Lord. He's bigger than you can imagine. Still, my words are inadequate. It's not enough. The soaring wing that I have of my little faith must rise somehow higher and I don't know. My praise can only pause here for a second. Then it should repeat as the angels repeat. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. And then we commence it again and again and again because his work is endless. And here you come today saying, well, who am I? But you come into his house and God is in his house and he's ready to bless anybody that would like to understand that the Lord, the Lord, this great God, the great I am has got his eye fixed on you and today he wants to lift you up above the trouble of this world and let you stand in a heavenly place and speak words to you that are filled with love and compassion yeah. and still my words are inadequate the time God is now added on to the Lord the Lord and now he goes to the Lord the Lord God, the Lord God, 
that speaks of how much power and strength in God is unbounded in his sovereignty. He sits upon the omnipotent throne. He wields the scepter of unlimited control. His right hand has all power. He speaks and the waters roll back. He speaks and then the seasons change. He speaks and the stars begin to sing and still yet my words are inadequate. He can listen. Who can hinder his work at all? You can take all the worlds and pile them together and his mere breath can drive them into absolute nothingness and I am still inadequate to describe this God. Amen. Amen. Collect all the multitudes of people from earth and hell and his foot could drive them into nothingness. Shall then this powerless man that I am fill myself with vanity and vaunt against this God who is beyond my ability to spin words I tried to write down those adjectives to describe who he is, and I found myself absolutely inadequate. Who am I to stand in this holy place and speak the words of God? What well, gives me the right to even say his name? No wonder, so long ago, they said it this way, Eloi, Eloi, lama kene my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? In that moment of time, an old sin world cascaded upon Jesus. He looked up and he felt that his father could not look at him. And yet, he took all the sin that there was and he shook himself. I don't know when he shook himself. Maybe he shook himself as one cried out, Remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And he said, I cannot bask in the sin. And therefore he shook himself and said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. It is finished. Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. I have won. I have overcome. I have overcome. The righteous one is dying that they might have life. Oh, God, send down the life to them. Today, all of you that hear me should think about the fact a little clearer. Be wise with your time today. God's going to have the last word in my life. Yes. Yes. Be wise with your time. The word of God strides forward with a restless desire. It strides to rescue you because his eye is upon you and your only refuge is at Calvary's cross. And to all of you that love him, this name ought to fly down on wings of peace to you. He is strong and he is mighty and he is full of your support. Your God is your shield. Yes. Amen. There's a lot of things being thrown at you right now. But your God is your sheep. Amen. The things that are coming, the devil says, I have taken this joy and I have taken that joy and I have replaced it with this misery or that misery. But God said, I am your shield. Yes. And you hold it up and said, yes, the darts are coming, but they have not penetrated and I will allow you hit this shield and my shield. <laughs> Which fool? can penetrate that shield of God. And when he comes, hold up the shield and then pick up the sword and say, I will not yield I your Lord. Amen. The Lord can assail that fortress, that shout of God with a shield in one hand and the sword in the other. Who will assail that fortress? Let me tell you something. Jesus Christ is our fortress. Yes, he is. He, listen, behind him are you not safe? How many times has he not come to speak to you words of encouragement? I'm going to tell you as a pastor, time and time again, I've had to go to see people that are dying, and I run out of words, but somehow God gets there before I do, and he says the words that I cannot say. He ministers where I don't know how to minister, and he reaches down, and he picks them up, and he holds them in his hand, and he rocks them and says, I've got you, and death comes calling, and death looks like it's going to win, but God says to death, no, this one's mine, and I want you to understand I the resurrection and I am the life of the 
And Morgan faces death a moment before with fear and trepidation. Now looks at it as a welcome friend and holds her hands out and say, I welcome you, dear, dear death, because I'm going to see the master. Yes. Sometimes fires come our way, amen. But he is a wall, a fire around us, a holy fire. Who can assail into this fortress? Who can break through to wound you? He has promised you life eternal as your inheritance, and no devil out of hell can prevent it. He is bearing you on his own arms into heaven. Who can pluck you from his grasp? He said, no man can take you from my hand. The Lord, the Lord God, merciful it says. The voice proceeds to open our vision to see a little bit of his heart. And that heart is mercy. Mercy. I gotta tell you, mercy is a big word. And that is so beautiful again. It's like trying to describe God. How do you describe, describe mercy? I, I have tried. I know I've given you an example once before. I'll give it to you again, hoping that you get it. But one day, Justice was having a meeting up in heaven. <coughs> and Justice said, where in the world is mercy? We're about to start the meeting, and mercy is not here. Where is mercy? And the call went out, where is mercy? And Justice said, I'm getting tired of waiting for mercy. I will have the meeting. I am justice. But mercy finally came, walking through the door. But his clothes were ripped asunder, and he smelled like smoke, and he smelled like fish. And he said, where have you been dressed like this and come to this meeting? He said, my name is Mercy. I smell like smoke because I was down the fire with three Hebrew children. I smell like fish because I was in the belly of the well with Noah or with Jonah. And not only that, I'm ripped, my clothes are ripped because I spent the night in a lion's den telling them they could and now Mercy comes to Christ the King and says, I am here. Because you've been through so much, but his eye is upon you, and mercy comes and says, Let me hold you. Your father loves you. The sun, even abounding in all of its light, pales in comparison to the word mercy. As seas and drops of water is unmeasurable, the sky in all of its glittering bristles brim is so God is one vast treasure house of mercy. Yes. It's the brightest jewel of his crown. And again, my words are inadequate. but it overtops the heavens and outlives all time. It is the riches of all the riches. It is mercy. Mercy is that sweet and tender love which shed a tear for us if we needed a tear. Thoreau said, because you are my friend, I have no lock on tongue or heart, for you are me outside of me, a separated part. That laughs with me, or weeps a tear, if I should need a tear, who offers an arm to offset harm whenever harm is near. I love you, he said. This is the first of my great glories that come out, that I love you so much. Well, the Bible said, God so loved the world that he gave his son. <laughs> so the next mercy, the next glory that comes out is mercy. And it just steals the panorama all around you. But how marvelous is the word of God. How glorious he is. This mercy grieves in our sorrow. And it sorrows in sorrow. And it yearns over the misery that we have. And only lives in to heal the wounds that have come our way. It comes calming the anguish. And it converts our crying to joy. And we find ourselves dancing in the presence of a king. Right in the middle of our struggle. When the devil said, I go to you. You stand up and say, no, I am 
Should the God of mercy come for you, Paul? Yeah. Well, before the God of mercy was done, Paul would evangelize almost all the known world. Yeah. <coughs> the penitent on the cross of Calvary said, Be merciful. Just be merciful. Remember me. And floods of peace overflow him. The blind beggar cried out, Oh, some day that had mercy on me. The Bible said Jesus stood still. <laughs> A mother on the streets of Maine <coughs> had lost her child when this Jesus came and raised him back to life. Mercy still reigns in heaven, does it? Amen. Have you not sometimes felt the presence of mercy? Amen. Thinking, I did not deserve it, but it came anyway. <coughs> you know, we ought to believe in God enough that we can bring our unhealed wounds to Him and say, Lord, I've been everywhere else, but no one had an answer for me. I, I understand that. I remember when I was going to school, I was going to school all the time. And there's a fact, I did not finish my education until I was 46 years old. That's when I got my doctorate. But up until that time, I went to school. I went to, to school to learn medicine because I wanted to learn everything that I could. And, and I thought I was doing pretty good. Thought I was very, very wise. But I can tell you again and again and again, it did not matter which corridor I went down, whether it was the corridor of the professor of anatomy, physiology, or microbiology, or any of the ology. It doesn't matter. None of them could feel the longing that was in my soul. I needed something more than what the world could teach me. I needed something that could not be taught by man. It had to be felt, and it had to come from God above. Amen. Amen. So bring your wounds to him today. Bring those times that you just wanted to yell out, God, do you hear me? Do you see me? And by the way, we have precedent for that. Because time to time again, we say, well, I don't want to say things like that because it seems like that we are less than optimal. But it may be that you need to bring your lament to God and say, just like the disciples did, Master, care us not that we perish. And considerable be a little faith and heal you. Maybe we ought to do that. Bring your needs and resupply. Bring your difficulties. They'll be smoothed out. The Bible said, merciful and gracious, the Lord declares. For a grace shows its previous form as mercy pities misery, so grace is helpful in unworthiness. And grace comes when we are unworthy. Unmerited favor. We don't deserve all of this. I don't deserve to stand here and preach to you about a God whose description is above my ability to speak. Not grace. Not because of merit. Not because of the fact that I am special. That I inherited some special place. I am called to preach because God chose me to preach. That's all. He chose. That's it. Nothing more, not because of my ability, not because of my words. We know that already, because I don't have the words to describe the God heaven who comes saying, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious is he. Sin follows us here, wave after wave, but so does grace. Grace springs forth and reminds us how fast God's love is for us. He said, I will save because I will save. Not because he deserved it, but I will save because I will save. I will redeem from hell because I will redeem. No other spring, no other fountain. Grace girds itself in the work that it does. And it surrounds us. Grace, through all salvation plan, God leads us to salvation's captain. This Jesus, this glorious God of ours. Grace writes our name down. Grace is not going to rest until its shout can be heard above all the clamor that is in this world. But it does. The world says,
says, who are you? And Grace says, I've got you. Who do you think you are? And Grace says, I've got you. Yeah. Hallelujah. Either you all are all listening very attentively today, <laughs> or you've left me. But if you have, may I suggest that you come back right away. Amen. Because you need to hear this. Because it said, I am low suffering and slow to anger. But he also said, do not think that I will leave the sinner unpunished. I am low suffering. Here is a harbor that we can, that our weighed, tossed soul can rest on. But all the